Okay, so I'll just run the game in full screen this time. Should be easy. Tell me, uh, tell me if you see see anything. Okay. You see the game? E, no, I see nothing yet. I see yeah. your computer, but there's a stream delay, so. Okay. Oh, there we go. Game's up. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, I can. Yeah, but the, the, there's one problem. Now I can't see the comments, so you. It's up to you guys to like show you show me. Yeah, don't worry, we we <laughs> got the comments, comments here. Okay. okay, so yeah, uh, let me know when like we have people and it's live, so then I can start the game. Yeah. Uh, Jafar, by the way, for this uh, start screen, mm -hmm. how feasible would it be to like this smoke coming out? To animate this, some smoke that's in this direction. Smoke coming out of so like what? This the the left hand side of the image. You see, like you know, the smoke is kind of rising here. Uh -huh. Okay. It's, it needs to be very realistic, though. Right. Yeah. I think with that background, uh, adding any animation doesn't really work. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay as to it is. Yeah. Getting to blend, blend, blend in that well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. No big. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. We can have some like tiny flags or something in a distance. Like I don't know. Nah, that I don't think that would kind of jive well. Yeah. yeah. I think I'd use the other poster image anyway. This one looks a bit dark and moving. Uh, Mick, can you increase your volume a little bit? You sound very uh, muted. Like okay, wait. Yeah, I kind of like, um, you kind of sound like uh, Rob Brydon's Little Man in a Box. <laughs> <laughs> also, Arvin, I don't know if this would be like a problem, I doubt it, but. Uh, we won't actually be able to hear the stream if we're watching it because it'll be muted. Yeah. Okay. Also, keep in mind we'll be like 30 seconds behind. Okay, so I can't see the comments and you can't hear the stream. So, like, we have to act as the eyes and ears of each other. This is a team building exercise, is what yeah. this is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you ready? Yep. Is this better? Yeah, there's a lot uh, of whistling sound. A lot of whistling sound, okay. Do you happen to be running a steam engine in the background? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I would happily though. I like <laughs> steam engines. Okay, we ready to go? I'm just probably not gonna say too much then. Okay. Because I can't really raise the volume anymore. Okay. Okay. You yeah, know, this is fine. What you're saying now is fine. Okay, cool. Alright. Links up. And uh, now to a link from Twitter. Ready for some skin show this winter? Oh, oh yeah, also post this on our blog slash website. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, this is the point where I feel like you know we should have like I should have two displays. So I can see the comments in one. My God, this one uh, stream ad is just playing all the time, right? Yeah, for me too. <laughs> Let's look at the options menu. Oh, we've got a few viewers come. Well, yes, we know we do have a few viewers coming in for a moment. There, I was 
about to say. Uh, hey everyone, what's probably up? Just the team, but I mean, we have four viewers, so like that's that's the the rest of you guys. Mm. Six from my angle. Oh. And I've posted the link on Twitter, but I think it's safe to say that some people who are not currently part of this development team are probably at some point going to see this. <laughs> hey, y'all, what's up? Yeah, two. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, you can just sort of uh, you can just sort of hit us with them while we're waiting. We're just sort of waiting for a critical mass to build up, uh, then we'll get sort of started with the stream proper. In the meantime, you can enjoy Darvin messing with his user interface, which I know I personally is my favorite part of these streams. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. um, yes, uh, just for those of you who have showed up, we'll probably have to do a round of introductions again, but I'm Rutzgarn, I'm the lead writer. Uh, pictured in the PNP over in the bottom left is Arvind, the lead developer. He's the one who's going to be our pilot today. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh... And much like a pilot if we crash it's probably his fault <laughs> or mine or Ross's that's Ross yeah, yes, Ross. He is a, he's our, one of our script monkeys I don't know if that's how you introduce yourself to your parents Russ but Ross but that, that's I guess one way of describing your job definitely to my employers <laughs> it's an effective it's an effective title no but he actually also does like a lot of feedback on the, the game's development and design yeah I like that stuff as well yeah, it's a very. Uh, I this I'm Mick, the firearm source. Mm -hmm. And I'm Mick. I made the graphics. Most of yes. them, anyway. Mm -hmm. a lot, m almost all of the pictures we see once we start playing the game are going to be Mick's responsibility. Yeah, finally, yes. yes. these two. If yeah. they move, then the Japper did the moving part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm Japper. Yeah. If they're yeah. levitating yeah. in the air or their head is missing, that's probably my fault. <laughs> yeah, funnily enough, yeah. these two images are not uh, done by Nick. Yes, those images are actually leftovers of a previous iteration of the game. They're going to be swapped out. I think, I don't know, like, I, I feel like that Asha looks like somewhat more Caucasian than our current Asha. She looks, she, she has that anime style because uh, this is a leftover from the previous artist who drew in a kind of anime style. Anime style and kind of a more of a the usual RPG direction, yeah. which we're not heading for anymore. Yeah, yeah. You can tell because you know Caucasian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty spoiler-free stream, but yeah. we are going to be yeah you know, we're right. This is the beginning, so it hits it with a few plot points. We're mostly just going to wander around after this conversation. You feel free yeah. to watch it or not. Well, okay, it's over now on my screen anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It just occurred to me that uh, I'm watching the stream and commenting on it, but my audio is going on the stream in real time, so I'm somewhat behind the the actual <laughs> yeah. like, sort of stream here. So this uh, is so the first uh, conversation. Uh, I'm going to just pick the most agreeable options right now, so we okay, don't spoil I'll keep anything. It short. Yeah. Much like in real, well, see, we don't really have the thing in this game where like all conversations are the same length and have the same number of options, no matter how you proceed. Generally, if you're just nice and agree with people, they don't bother talking to you very much because they're like, "Oh, this person's on my side. Awesome." And then, at least I can think of a few examples of where, like, if you just sort of start agreeing with them, they kind of assume you'll agree with them on a lot of other things. And you could, you might have to sort of be like, hold on, hold on, slow down. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah, the one thing which we, uh, like, definitely, like, when we started out, the one thing which we all decided was that we did not want the same type of RPG conversations where it's like, hello, NPC. Tell me about your village, and then the NPC tells you about the village. Hello, NPC. Now tell me about your parents, and then yeah. what more yeah. do you want to know? Yeah. So we we, we wanted, don't do that. Yeah, we wanted to avoid falling into that trap because it's 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 fairly convenient. Like on the plus side, like that approach has a has a has positives in that uh, you can pre you I pretty think you're much. Muting yeah, yourself there a bit, yeah, darling. Yeah, just sort of cut in and out a little bit. That might just be on Hangout, I'm not sure. That might actually have come up on final stream. Yeah, that might actually be with Google, Google Hangouts, like, because that, that isn't like when I type. 
Google doesn't like when I type. Google Hangouts has Google to be the most. Google like a lot of things. Yeah, like Google Hangouts has to be the most clingy chat interface ever. It's like, hey, you're like it. It tries to do your thinking for you. It feels like a micromanaging boss. It's like you're typing. Well, <laughs> I'm muting you. Then yeah. I don't like the sound of typing. <laughs> it's the MS Word of chat clients. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and now you are seeing the alternative control scheme. Earlier I was moving with the mouse and keyboard, mouse, uh, the keyboard. Now I'm moving with a point and click interface. Similar to oh, that's in, huh? Adventure games. It yeah, is. yeah, it's in. Like yeah, it took me like uh, it took me about eighteen hours to code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is this. We we got some feedback when we were showing the game off to people that uh. It, this this was meant in a good way. That sort of the gameplay feels like a mix between RPGs and like adventure games. Uh, I think part of that's because we do have an inventory, although we don't have like combining item inventory puzzles. Yeah. Uh, but part of it is because uh, I think part of it's because you know you don't have like a spells menu. You don't like get into fights on your way down the street. It's mostly just walking around and talking to people and finding out what they're about. And also, you know, solving it's it, if anything, it's like more like a modern Telltale style adventure game, and that a lot of the bit, a lot of the gameplay is making decisions. I think that was yeah. probably our biggest inspiration, like as far as you know, the conversations go. Yeah, pretty much, and I think like uh, we also invoke uh, some of the spirit of like I, I believe the older uh, the older Ultimas where you spirit. can often. Christmas uh, future? Uh, no, I mean, you can uh, sort of just uh, just by walking around and interacting with the environment, you can kind of uh, uncover new possibilities and, like, you know. Yes. I also sort of tried to make it so that, like, you know, you could kind of just think about what you would want to do in this situation. I tried to include as many logical options as possible. I think that's, like, neglected by a lot of RPGs. I mean, I'm not thinking of any particular big-budget, extremely expensive launch titles that came out on December, on November 11th of 2011. <laughs> but... No. Fucking Skyrim! Yeah, but I also, uh, <laughs> Like, you know... Uh, yeah, because uh, like oftentimes what happens is like you have RPGs where like there's combat and stuff, and all the lat like all the parts where you are supposed to think is just like how do I deal more damage to people? Like, so it's like you can do hey you can combine this ability with this ability and and stuff like that. So hey you can once you get them to to bleed you can implement you can cast this spell which like rubs salt in their wounds or something like that. You know, but like in terms of the actual, uh, like once, as soon as the dialogue starts, it just kind of, uh, it just kind of stops, you know, like all of that lateral thinking goes out of the way and you have like these two conversation options, options with the, which the designer like, thought it was like, yeah, that that's pretty much it. So yeah, like uh, what you saw right now, that's sort of spoilery, so I did not go ahead with that. But yeah. Yes. We're trying to avoid conversations which evince too much of the plot. Yeah. yeah this is a Naga merchant. Yeah. Just I'm not standing next to this guy so you can sort of compare the relative size of humans and Naga. Oh, that guy has a chair now. It's it's really interesting actually like seeing this level. Like I'll be honest, this this level is actually a little more put together than the last build I had, because when you've got a chapter like this, all of the tweaks, like the tweaks, like the, the, that are from a programming perspective very simple, you save for last. But from a cosmetic, like walking around in a perspective, those tweaks are things like, you know, the most obvious stuff, like the merchant is floating <laughs> three feet above where she should be. You know, yeah. The, the, all the tooltips are replaced with like faceless staring clones of the main character. <laughs> uh, I have one screenshot which I might share if Arvin lets me at some point, uh, which is yeah. actually a GIF uh, screenshot of a giant standing in in front of a tree that he <laughs> should be behind of, while another man like teleports left and right on the <laughs> side. Yeah, that's just how like 
it it goes. Yeah, you can yeah share that actually. Like just link it into the stream. Yeah, because that that giant guy was awesome. I, 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 I need to render it up into a gif. Yeah. but uh, I, I've, I've actually got. Of it. I've got two YouTube videos of similar bugs I encountered. The giant indicator marker thing and the uh that was pretty good. But I also like Crazy Rake Man who was just spazzing out. <laughs> yeah, Crazy Rake Man uh was one of many NPCs who have the dis what I call the displacer beast effect, uh which is very simple to fix, like almost instantaneous. But uh when we let it un leave it unfixed, it just sort of like is the sprite <laughs> like, think of the bounding box around where the sprite would be, like, defining the edges of the sprite. It's basically just sort of sliding back and forth, and as the left side disappears, it reappears on the right side. It's in kind of a chaotic pattern. Yeah. And it's very it's surreal to watch. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually thinking that, like, you know, uh, like, ever since I started making games, so I played Oblivion before I started making games. And I played Skyrim after I had made two games. So... So, like, the way you perceive bugs, like, is altered very, like, very noticeably. So, so if somebody phases through a wall, you're like, oh yeah, like, obviously, like, and no big deal, that guy's collision thing is called, I just reload the level. So, you walk out of the exit, then come back in. Sometimes it, it's fixed, sometimes, sometimes it isn't. Then you are, uh, then, like, and before you were like, oh my god, like, how could they have let, let this happen? This is the worst bug in the history of mankind. That guy just fell through the wall or something, you know? So... I mean, I don't know if that has happened for you guys yet. I mean... Like, Ratskan is the one who's like, live-streaming Skyrim right now. Mm -hmm. So, like, has, has de developing this game, like, uh, changed your perception of what... Uh, like, the bugs in other games? It has absolutely changed my perception. Most, not as much of the bugs, although I'm a little more sympathetic. Um, although I, I still think that you know the developer has a certain uh, responsibility to squash those before releasing. But it's not really the dev's fault; it's the publisher's fault. I have always had that perspective. It, it, like bugs, bugs are almost always the result of the publisher forcing a, a launch too soon. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, because I think I think most developers would really rather their game that they spend all these years working on would rather have one more month to make sure that people like their game and aren't frustrated with their game. Yeah, and is fixing bugs is is usually easy compared to actually making new stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, it's like you know, it's it, it's 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 only hard because there's a large volume of bugs. The individual bugs aren't that bad yeah. often. Well, I mean, you know, I'm sure there are some of them are really awful, but. It, the majority of them are just really simple things that are human error. Yeah. Uh, I, but anyway, uh, oh they actually. I was gonna, just going to say the big thing it's changed my um, changed my appreciation of is complexity and dialogue. Mostly because that's the part that's my fault. Uh, that's the part that's my responsibility. Is uh, whenever I these days whenever I play a game and I discover that something is different depending on conditions, I'm a little bit impressed. Uh, more impressed depending on how subtle that thing was. Uh, I think... And I'm also actually a little less tolerant of stuff like in Skyrim. Uh, I, I bring this up in a spoiler warning episode. In Skyrim, if a guard accosts you, he's like, wait, oh, I know you. And you only have one response, which is you're making a mistake. Now, the good part about that response is that it's general. Uh, that it, you know, you can interpret that to mean, oh no, you're making a mistake. I'm not that guy. I am Gerard. I'm a Briton who has come in from the northern border. Now, uh, but or it can be like you're making a mistake. You don't want to arrest me. I'll punch you really hard and then suplex you in the middle of the street. Uh, which and not you know the guard doesn't listen either way. So that's the good part about it. The bad part is, it still removes a lot of options the player would probably want to express. Like, for example, if they probably, like, they, they might actually just be an honest dude who's like, okay, fair cop, I'll just go pay my 20 gold. It's not a big fucking deal. I'm not going to stand here, like, trying to get out of a speeding ticket. You could even be run. smart. Well, it's a player response, I guess, but... Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you could be smart about it, and actually have some sort of condition dependent on what their bounty is. It really wouldn't yeah. be difficult. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it would just take the extra, like, minute for the writer to work on that. Like, and sort of... Yeah, but that. that's, that's, that's kind of the problem. That's why it's not uh, done in many games, is that that uh, one situation takes that extra minute for the writer to work on it, and maybe for the scripter, like, five or ten minutes. Yeah, uh, if there is that one situation is like that, then the player will expect the same freedom in all the other ones as well. Exactly. And that turns into like three, four, five more months of development time. Yeah. So I think usually they take the easy way out and everything is like really linear and yeah. constantly yeah. the same. Yeah, so on the one hand, from a practical perspective, I understand it more. I understand how it builds up. But from a like a profession, like a craftsman perspective, I have less tolerance for the most egregious examples. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think yeah, another problem here is that like a lot of the times, uh, what goes in the game isn't actually decided by uh, like you know the developers. What 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 goes on is uh, like exec A walks into Bethesda offices. He's like, "What are you working on? Hey, I'm working on this dialogue option. Well, wait a minute. Like I thought." But like the kids are into hacking people with access these days, so they are like, oh yeah, whatever. Like focus on that. Yeah, that's 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 definitely a thing. But uh, even if the developers are like pretty much directly in control of what goes into the game, if the team is big, the team is going to be divided up into like sectors: who's the programmer, who's the game designer, who's the graphic artists, like all of those will be soft teams and then having these soft teams communicate with each other is a whole lot of work and a whole lot of opportunities are missed there so that's why I like indie development you can have a small team you can discuss everything the graphic artists can uh, uh, like give game design ideas uh, as well as the game designers themselves, the programmers can discuss what's doable and what's not, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Though now, since we have basically spent the last ten minutes, uh, like you know, piling on Bethesda, our game will launch and it will be the buggiest game in the entire history of video games. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and let's be fair here. In our game, you cannot ride a horse up the side of a mountain and then punch a troll with a sword. <laughs> like punch a troll with the sword. It's not yeah. something you can do on our video game. So I mean, you know, if if it's one or the other for some reason, you know, you just you can use that to inform your purchasing decision. <laughs> we'll say, you know, we didn't have the split yeah. dollars with us to have, but uh, and yeah, you can also give us feedback on the art style and ask us questions and everything. And do we have any questions? Not right now. Uh, we do have viewers, right? Like everyone hasn't just left or anything. Yes, we have eighteen viewers. Right? Hey, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, that's I'm only like eight of them, so no problem. <laughs> Damn, I'm ten. <laughs> <laughs> just a heads up: if you're watching the stream, you don't exist. <laughs> we don't want to break it this way, but it turns out you're a figment of the development team's imagination. Uh, you can dispel this illusion by sending us questions. Which we will answer. If you're a pigment of Rothscarn's imagination, that's probably not that bad, though. Yeah, you're. But if you're a pigment of <laughs> my imagination, then yeah, good luck. So yeah, uh, yeah. If you ask questions, uh, know that Arvin can't see them because he's too busy with video games. <laughs> Playing video games in the middle of the stream, Marvin. How unprofessional. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, the rest of us uh, who are not demoing Unrest will answer yeah. them for you. Or share them with Arvin so that he can answer them as he demonstrates the lovely video yeah. game that we worked so hard on. And yeah, by the way, we have t-shirts for sale. Like, I'm surprised nobody has mentioned this. I pay you guys for like mentioning t-shirts on streams. So yeah, we have mm -hmm. t-shirts on sale. <laughs> I think everybody's just sort of taken aback by the fact that it turns out you do actually have different clothing besides that unrest shirt. <laughs> mm -hmm. The um, at what point are we going to move on to chapter two? 
And how are we going to do that? Uh, using the command line, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, we could just, you know, we, we could actually, I think, play through chapter one and then get to chapter two normally. Yes. But uh, that would be spoilers. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah, it would be kind of like, yeah, that would be ending a chapter, so. So, okay, any chapter one specific questions? Does anyone want me to roam around anywhere in particular? Or should we move on to chapter two? Okay, I'll take that silence as a yes. Indeed. Let me just check what's happening on the comments. Oop. Uh. Wait, did somebody ask something? No, just like yeah. a statement. But somebody did actually ask something right now. ZZZ said, what's the next item you're working on now? Good question. We want to just go around the circle, because we've all got different items being different members of the team. Uh, yeah, sure. uh, as, a, as a whole, our uh, priorities right now are to uh, get this... Uh, basically, we are at 30%. We want to get the next chapter done. So then we would be roughly 50% completed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so right now, at the moment, all of the like bugs and everything mostly are uh, eliminated, programming bugs at least. So now we mostly have uh, scripting and like content creation to deal with. So we're just making new content. Ratskan is writing new conversations. Ross is implementing them. Then yep. yeah, I am programming like controller support. The the little bits that are left and. Uh, Mick is drawing stuff, yeah, he's drawing levels, Jafar is animating stuff, so, yeah. Just general mm. content creation. Yeah, basically I'm drawing, like, the final touches on the levels for the third chapter, and a few more characters for that. Which is more, more like city stuff, uh, right now we saw the countryside and now Arwin went to the slums. Yeah. But the uh, next levels will be like more fancy city. Yeah. Mm hmm. But um, uh, my my big thing is I'm I'm actually working on uh, we've had chapter five, which is kind of like a big, lots of things happen and. I kind of want to give the players like the most interesting choices we can, and we've sort of gone back and forth on a few different drafts of how it ends. Yeah. And you know, like we, we thought we had it finalized, but we sort of came around to we could sort of make this better, and that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm actually really excited with how yeah. Chapter Five is coming out. I mean, I, I, in other words, I basically told Red Scan his writing is bad. And it sucks. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it. it was great. Yeah, they're <laughs> crying. Uh, he spent like 20 minutes drawing Craigslist uh, for another guy. <laughs> found the guy. Turns out that the guy was just like literally insane. <laughs> they wrote up a script uh, where basically the player is the chosen one who is being dropped onto the alien homeworld, which just looks like an Indian village. <laughs> And Arvin didn't really go with that direction, ultimately. Uh, although we did sneak in some cameos from yeah. the triple-headed uh, springboard monster. <laughs> on, on the plus side, we now have all the footage we need for the documentary. Yeah, that guy pretty much saved our, us right there. I mean, we wanted to be like this pretentious documentary, which just had like these really long shots of us working. And, because that was pretty much all we had that was interesting. Yeah. But that guy threw around a bunch of scenery and literally shot a man, so that will be some exciting people. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that, that's what... That, that, None that, of that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> so yeah, this is, the, uh, this is chapter 2, and uh, this is slightly different from chapter 1 in that uh, you roam around this place and there's lots of interesting mini-scenarios that are happening. So on the bottom there's this priest guy who's uh, like doing some inflammatory uh, speeches and all that stuff. Then there's these three people 
uh, if can can people see my mouse while where I'm holding? Yes. Then there's these three people who are uh, like sort of hatching a conspiracy kind of thing, and then there's these two people who are also kind of uh, like involved in something. So yeah, th this is general, and this is uh, like Camster from Erin Signal. He's pissing in the wall or something. Mm -hmm. This guy does look like this actually. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. And then there's this, yeah, there's this child. Like, how do you know why this child is? I'll tell Chris, I'll tell Chris we have a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Just uh, this is weird. Uh, like, did we fix this problem? Uh, like in the in the bottom of the screen, you see, it's nothing's being drawn there. I thought we had fixed this. Uh, oh, you mean like the black line? Yeah. Or what are you talking about? That one, yeah. Well, hey, glitch number Get one. Back. Wow, yeah. we actually got pretty far into that stream. <laughs> I'm also pretty sure we fixed it, but why is it back? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's the, the, here's glitch number two. Now I've loaded the level, and as soon as I walk, I the exit. Yeah, it's. I think what might have happened is that like Mick Mick redrew it, and like the exits were in the previous version of the level. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Ross, you'll need to fix this too. Like the exit between slum market and slum okay. one. Yeah. Sorry, I'm actually having trouble following what the problem is. Uh, so the problem is that look, like now I'm I have spawned in this level from that exit, right? So as soon as I move, uh, the problem is I spawn inside the the exit to that level. So. You get what I I'm see. saying, right? Yeah. So I keep oh. on cycling back. That doesn't happen to me in my version. I must have been with the new, uh, new XMLs or different places. Yeah, yeah. This would probably need to be fixed in the TMX though, rather than like the XML file. Okay, you're right. That's what I meant. Yeah. Hot troubleshooting action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah luckily, the wall. yeah, luckily this was, uh, like this is one feature which we have is that rolling autosaves. So you see here that we have two autosaves. So even this autosave was kind of screwed up. But then I, I loaded up this autosave. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so don't worry, we have you covered from our own ineptitude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why everyone doesn't do the source engine rolling quick saves thing. Where like you save and then you quick save again and it saves the last quick save because everybody's done that thing like the one that sticks in my mind the most is MDK2 where like you're falling down a pit and you act you go hit quick load and you accidentally quick save right before you hit the darkness and then you're like well I just wasted the past eight hours of my time yeah this is a pretty interesting guy this is this is based on one of our backers so we're not going to spoil this guy right now but yeah this is based on one of our backers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hey, that, that's yeah. Conversations and data added by one of the backers. Yeah. This person, yeah, this this child is not one of our backers. Yeah, and this is yeah. This is as far as I'm willing to go. Actually, till this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After this, we this take one more step and be the farthest our streams have ever been. <laughs> yeah, it would be kind of spoiler territory, major spoiler territory. So. Yeah. So yeah, let's just, uh, I'll just I'll just sort of give you an idea of what happens. Uh, we take a step forward. That guy with the spear is like, you can't go any further, and he charges you. And the that cuts to a uh, like a pre-rendered cutscene where you grab his spear and like throw him off of it down the bridge. Then he twirls behind your back, like that sort of thing where it's pointed away from you. <laughs> and then the guys rush you one by one, and you like race towards them like in Final Fantasy. You pull vault over them and spear them all in the back in midair, and then flip over. And that's when it starts the. 30 hour hallway uh, <laughs> full of repetitive combats against Vimro guards. Yeah. No, what actually happens is that. If you mess up the quick time event. Uh, the game ends. No, actually, um, Nathan Drake saves you. The and then you play as Nathan Drake for the 30 hour corridor. <laughs> Man, this always happens. We have a stream and then we end up designing a better game than the one we <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, We've, this you should know by the way that these jokes aren't really so much even for the stream's benefit. This is pretty much just like this is pretty much just ha what happens in our meetings. Like, yeah, 
19 minutes of discussing seriously the issues in the game, and then one minute of just sarcasm. <laughs> just brutal sarcasm. Yeah. It's like everyone is just snarking all over the place. Sort of like what would mm. happen if Tony Stark and Dr. House ever met. And we're not like saying that from the perspective of like our game is better than these games, just from like yeah. we could never afford this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is that? Sort of like, you get a very acute sense of all of your limitations when you're an indie dev. Yeah. And it's kind of fun to just bullshit about exceeding them <laughs> for like for a minute or two. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's pretty funny because like, Unrest, I mean, its original vision was way big. Like, it, it was like three cities and like, it, like Bethesda would have struggled to make a game that fit my specifications. It's funny though, because with more money in a project, you actually kind of lose freedom in places as well. Yeah. Like, especially when you're designing environments and you're adding detail, the yeah. major problem with adding detail isn't a cost-based one, it's actually a work-based one. Nobody wants to design every individual pebble on Giant Street when you're making it photorealistic. It takes so much time and it's so creatively unsatisfying. Yeah, no, that's kind of the problem actually. What happens is, like, in, in usual game structures, like game industry structure, what happens is the most talented artists are the ones making the the, the headliner stuff, like let's say uh, a very big building that, that looks kind of different. Like so in Skyrim for example, I'm pretty sure like that, that building that's up in the sky, like not the sky, the mountain. What's that called when the old guys teach you something about the force? The throat of the world. Yeah, the throat of the world, that or the, the big castles. So basically these kind of things which are interesting to design and all that stuff, so the most talented artists would probably be working on that and the entry level artists they would be making bowls and apples and stuff like that so the, the problem then becomes is that like if you have a 50 person art department every person needs to be ex think exactly the same way and be on exactly the same page uh, and then you can like have a completely weird setting with all everything weird and like you can interact with everything but that's usually not possible so m most of the things you're like okay hey entry yeah. level guy like uh, we don't even pay you that much so you know how to make a, a standard bowl right so you go make that you know how to make a standard sword go make that so that's how like you add more and more people so it kind of deviates towards a standard like a standard thing yeah definitely that's that's the point where the most graphics wise the most important person actually becomes like the art director yeah. not any of the actual artists yeah because exactly. that's that's the guy who then somehow tries to uh, get all of these artists to work together and make some sort of coherent whole and that's yeah. that's like the hardest thing ever yeah pretty much but so, but, but yeah it, it, there are like one to five artists in a game you can make something a lot more creative and interesting yeah. but of course then it has to be a lot more smaller scale yeah pretty much yeah uh, so like in, in our game for example uh, Mick is basically 0.75% of the art director that's Mick 25% is probably me and uh, again the rest of the team also like depending on like who's giving the feedback and then like Mick is pretty much uh, decides the direction where the art goes and then like for the animation stuff it's it's 50 50 between Mick and Jafar so Jafar is like okay we can do this animate stuff like this so then Mick is like okay we can so I will draw it in this way then so it's yeah so that's the the benefit of having a smaller team is that you know So uh, yeah, that's so now that we have uh, discussed that, like, do we have any particular questions about anything or like? Basically, best job ever. I get to create <laughs> create the whole ancient Indian city. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see like a 3D ancient Indian city, but no one's ever done it. Uh, like there probably have been one or two attempts, but like none that are like got very far or were very pretty good. So 
I mean, the problem the best is... you'd probably get, we Prince of Persia. Yeah, Prince of Persia. Sands of Time had this ancient Indian level yeah. at the right start. Although that, that doesn't kind of like look like India, it looks like. But yeah, I don't know, like it, it's the closest we have. I would love to have an Assassin's Creed game set in an Indian city. That would be like awesome. Yeah, and we keep getting the same Assassin's Creed games in places we've tread before. And I mean, now they've just sort of given up on cities altogether. They are now like, they've, they've like started. Yeah, we go climb some maker. trees. Oh look, it's a lynx. Go stab it to death and bring its claws back for twenty credits. Yeah, it's 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 been Far Cry defied, like Far Cry three defied, exactly. basically. Assassin's Creed four. Uh, so yeah, that Ubi is kind of like that. They of they their games tend towards like I'm pretty sure Watch Dogs will also have a similar kind of uh, lots of things to collect, lots of things to or I guess lots of things to hack since like you know like it's it's computers. Yeah. And that's why my favorite uh, thing related to hacking was when Iron Man three when Tony Stark is like nobody says hack anymore. Yeah, but like hard, the game in the game industry is kind of like. Everyone is still speaking hack. Hmm. Alright, uh, any questions from anybody? Yeah. We live to have our lives examined minutely by <laughs> strangers. Yeah. But hey, can somebody link actually like where we are selling our merch? Because I would like some money, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, uh, the, the point of the merchandise is sort of to prolong our development as long as possible. Yeah. I mean, we like we're not. Don't take this as we're running out of money and we're having a yeah. budget crisis. It's more just like every we can use pretty much every dollar we can get. Yeah. Not that we need them, though we can use them. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they, you know, like people are banging on our door saying you haven't paid rent for six months or anything. Like, I mean, at least not for me. I'm not sure about my other teammates. Not for Lynn. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. Like, I've got a very promising position at the Home Depot <laughs> that I'm being interviewed for. <laughs> nah. Like, have you, uh, that's kind of, have you have, has anyone ever, like, walked up to you in real life and say, like, hey, I recognize you from the internet? Has that ever happened? Uh, yeah. Actually, once. Really? <laughs> wow, nice. Yeah, it was in fact. Also scary. It was a friend of well, what it, what it was was that um, I was like a friend of mine had invited me to like a. Uh, well, actually, there's there's two occasions. One where a friend of like mine, who's like married and sort of out of college and stuff and a professional, uh, invited me to like one of his RPG nights where he had his old friends there. And one of them like sort of afterwards, and like we're all playing an RPG together, and like it's you know very story based, and you know. Afterwards, one of the players comes up and she's like, "Hey, uh, so I watch your show, by the way." <laughs> it was kind of surreal. Did you like see a big sign in front of your eyes? Achievement unlocked. Yeah, just a little bit. Well, to be honest, a big part of actually why I went to work on Rust was because I knew Arvind had worked on Dystopia, and I knew you from watching like the Chocolate Hammer stuff, and of course the incredibly nice plug you did at my blog that one time. Mm -hmm. For which I am forever in your debt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your debt will be called in. <laughs> um, actually, but uh, the other the other time was just that uh, I w actually went to a friend's house and his brother watched my show, and uh, that was during the Dishonor season of uh, Spoiler Warning. Right, and there was a point where I was talking to him, and just sort of casually, I like folded my arms, and then as I started like saying things, I started doing the thing where like I would like, gesture outward, and kind of my little tea, <laughs> my I'm a little teapot, my ring, in the way that dishonored people do when they're talking, and that actually like surprisingly, I kind of geeked him out. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is just a uh, uh, pop-up dialogue and stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like uh, let me also take you through this inventory. So this is our inventory. This is the money you have right now, helpfully labeled money. Uh, and yeah, this is just 
So you can collect all of that stuff. You can use some of that if in certain uh, situations. Yeah, that's where the most of most similarity with adventure games comes from. And I mean, I I don't think it's it's anything particularly like you know this is adventure game territory because for me this is the kind of stuff like which an RPG should have like in most RPGs the 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 maximum you get like in, in most I mean in most modern is like you have a key that's shaped like let's say that's shaped like a tiger and then you find you travel around and you see a home in which there is a lock in the shape of a tiger so you just kind of say so like key key items basically that's where it like but i think there's a lot of room in, in that like because manipulating items and all of that stuff that's a big part of like what like you know people do in their normal lives so you know i like as like it, i i feel that's just a part of rpgs which like hasn't really been uh, like has been forgotten sort of decently and also we have these traits which are like uh, they are sort of like follow perks except sort of more mundane i guess but yeah like they they uh, they function the same way uh, they'll probably unlock a few op options for you you might get to use some of them somewhere they might give you an advantage in a conversation yeah that's well and like in com for combat characters like help them help help them out in combat uh, and yeah this was actually another thing that happened uh, recently where uh, uh, i went to uh, delhi and i talked to a guy who sort of invests in video games so my conversation with this guy went like uh, so i was just showing him my game and he was like hey this is great uh, how do you plan to monetize it so i was like okay what i'll do is i i'll add a fifth dialogue option to every conversation which you can buy for 99 cents and it solves everything so yeah happy ending that's it yeah you can buy a happy ending so yeah, i think it's kind of weird like now most investors kind nowadays have this kind of thought process where they start off with okay is it a mobile game so the in the flow chart it's if it's yes then they move on to the next step otherwise it's like why is it it a mobile game <laughs> and then the in the next step it's like is it free to play so i'm like no it's not free to play so then this thing like, why is it free to play nobody you can just point to the mobile market of video games to be like this is why it's not a mobile game <laughs> have you yeah. seen dungeon keeper have you seen it yeah No, but the the main problem with the investors is that is that they don't really care about like the game, right? They are just like, did you know that Dungeon Keeper made fifteen hundred billion kajillion dollars per year? But they have to care about like the terrible PR it, it's generated now. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. No, no why? Like, they got the money, and that's their investors. Yeah. I mean, okay, at least that kind of yeah, investors they, they want to the got next. the return on their investments, and that. It's if they're long-term investors, they probably care, though. Yeah, that's the problem. Like most yeah, of these investors, yeah, that's, that's will, a different kind of person. Yeah, most of these investors will just move on to the next big thing, like soon. So right now, it's all mobile, free to play. Like once that part, like before that, it was Facebook games. In two thousand ten or nine, you, nobody would g give you any money for like a mobile game. Everyone would be like, "Hey, Facebook games." That's where the thing is. Right. So, like, it, it in, yeah, makes you wonder what the next thing is. Yeah. I don't know what the next thing is. Like, the next thing is probably like EA just. I think sooner or later it. we're going to have like your desktop PC will become your home server or something like that, and then everything you carry around will just be a peripheral for it. So your mobile is your desktop. That's what I would guess. Yeah, that, that's, that's just that's kind of weird. Idea. Like because lots of people now don't even like have computers. Like at least that's the vibe. Oh, yeah, the other other option is that you yeah. just have your mobile and that's it. Yeah. And if you want a bigger screen, you link it to your 
money for yeah. uh, on the table and that's yeah it. that's basically the same thing from a different direction the only yeah, thing yeah. is you're carrying around your mobile all the time and that they need to put the technology in there it would actually be easier for everyone if they just had a box at their house yeah yes i'm assuming like two or three next big things until we can get the augmentations we were promised in deus ex because I, I mean think about it, it yeah. You no longer have to worry about losing your cell phone because even if you lose it, it's just a peripheral. It's a bunch of. It's really cheap. Well, yeah, I, I've heard like that argument before, but it doesn't really work like that yet because people have like five hundred, six hundred dollar cell phones. Yeah, in their cell pockets. phones aren't cheap. Like, yeah. Oh, I know. But like four, four processes. Four core processors in them, each core being like one gigahertz and two gigabytes of RAM, and that's a pretty good computer already. People carry around them around yeah. with themselves everywhere. Yeah, that's the thing actually. Like you know, if we could predict what what the next big thing would be, we would probably get on that. So yeah, there's no way to know until it actually happens. So do we have any questions or...? I do have a bit of an easter egg uh, that is totally not official. I just, in case you're wondering how quickly we can develop for Unrest, it's about this quickly. But uh, this is for you, Rutskarn, I guess, since you brought it up. Mm-hmm. Wait, has anyone...? I actually, like, I've been missing some of the audio. This happens sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, stream. Uh, yeah, somebody asked a question about stream. Uh, stream stuttering. Yeah, that's that's oh. my connection. Yeah, that's my internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh that, that was the question. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's that's that that that's just sort of how it works, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, another thing which I wanted to ask our viewers actually is, uh, what would you think? Uh, like should uh, would be our approach towards getting on Steam? Should we uh, we have a couple of publisher opportunities open, or we could just go up on Steam Greenlight? So what do you guys yeah. think? Yeah. About that. I think Greenlight is probably something we shouldn't worry about right now. Anyway, uh, Greenlight requires a lot of time investment. It requires like a lot of just sort of plugging it and pushing it hardcore and you know it would be like the kickstarter campaign all over again honestly yeah. except more intense really yeah and, and um, not much apparent immediate reward so it's like <laughs> so i think i think we don't need to worry about that anyway maybe we'll get a publisher who'll get us on steam maybe not green light's not a priority right now yeah because that's the kind Sounds of thing yeah, the first thing is to get this stuff done. Then, then we'll have to see what kind of deals we could get and and how difficult it would be to do it completely ourselves and so forth. Once we have the product, we'll have the product forever. But yeah. until then, we should work on the product. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the reason I was actually asking was because like it takes a lot of PR thing to get it started. So... Yeah, like if we plan to like eventually get on green light and stuff, so we need to basically start like working one month before that. Mm -hmm. Who's that whistling? That's not me. The Samsung ringtone. I think it's probably Jaffa. Because Jaffer has this info. Is he trying to beckon a bird over so we can study it? Well, it's the default Samsung uh, notification mm. Nice, nice video there, Ross. <laughs> yeah, I can I see that. I have to wait until the stream ends to see it. Cool. When when Rutskard mentioned it, I I was like I have to do this, and then well, actually no, it was before it started because I, I just watched mm -hmm. the spoiler warning like last night, and like while we were in the meeting, I was just like okay, I'm not doing anything. I should just make this as a joke and take a screenshot. But then in the stream, he mentioned it, and I was like, no, I'm going whole hog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I 
that for some reason this tickles me. Possibly because it's pretty much the first time I've seen dialogue in the game that wasn't written by me. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be pretty crazy. Like, it's gonna be kind of weird to think that at some point this will be a full role-playing game, you know, with all the chapters, all the tooltips, and pretty much all of the words in it will be my fault. Uh, I mean, my responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like that because, like, that's where I can just say, hey, I like don't blame the messenger. I, I coded this. That's all that's comes for. <laughs> I think we should. Uh, all make like developer mods where we uh, let's say tweak it a bit yeah I think yeah once the game launches post launch we'll see what kind of response we get because I'm all for like you know expanding the game adding more stuff to it so yeah, yeah as soon as we finish yeah, the game I, I, I just yeah. thought of uh, ma making my own mod which would be basically 95% inside jokes and that's it huh. yeah I had this idea about a mod that was like, uh, like I, I don't know if I should talk about it because like since I happen to call the shots here, we might actually make that. So, <laughs> well, depending on how quickly yeah. we, uh, or not, what, what I'm doing at the end of development, I might just try to write my own thing. Yeah. It, it, it's so easy yeah, to exactly. do. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually something I. I think we should reiterate that uh, uh, basically the game as it is right now is a mod. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy yeah. for anyone who buys this game to make their own version. Yeah. And you can change as little as you want and as much as you want. So if you so if you just don't like this one guy and you want him to uh, be sitting somewhere else, you can have all of the game exactly the same. And whereas he is just sitting, let's say, in this level or in another level somewhere. So yeah. Or if you just want to make a mod that changes the user interface, you can you can just change that and keep the rest of it. Or the same. if you really want to go all out, then you can use the map editor called Tile, which is yeah. an open source thing, and completely make your own world. Yeah. With the same graphics that we have. Yeah. Or even just different graphics, yeah, just to completely different. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Down as long as you get your own spreadsheet, you could just drop into the tile and use that as well. Yeah, like right down to the like the words inside, like so every every single button can be different, every single map can be different, and right down to the smallest thing. Because it, it doesn't it. really yeah. look like it, but. Uh, it's actually all tiles. Yeah. The whole world is just a whole lot of really irregularly shaped tiles all over the place and mixed up. Yeah. But it's built out of tiles. Yeah. So we are about to hit the R mark. I think we should just have like five, uh, five, ten minutes of questions, and then we can uh, call it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any uh, any stuff that you want to ask us, like doesn't even have to be about the game actually. Like, just ask us whatever. My perfect Sunday starts with a nice cup of coffee in the morning paper. <laughs> they should get you to do the uh, the ads for live stream. <laughs> That'd be more interesting than what we actually get. I could also beatbox for five minutes. <laughs> yes. Oh <Don't> joy. <laughs> I lied. I can't beatbox. <laughs> there are many this? lies that I've told during the stream. 
but I always confess them in the end. Yeah. Except what if the confession is also a lie? To be clear, yeah. the lies are the stuff like, uh, we had a crazy man with a gun on our development team, and <laughs> it's basically going to be Final Fantasy XIII. Not so much the, this is what we're trying to do, and this is what the game development process is like. Yeah. Yeah, and and, the, and all of this stuff about Skyrim too. It's actually Ratskar's favorite game. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't know if, if if it's how it's like for you guys, but like for me, like when I'm showcasing this game, I'm probably more nervous than when I am actually like when faced with a problem that like you know when I look at a problem and I see like oh my god how am I going to fix this because this is like you know you have worked this is basically the team's like what it's like six months of our work so far yeah yeah so like this is like so uh, we just so, have a question which is what was on the yeah, wall behind yeah. you I think it's a journey poster right Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that's a that's a journey booster. Yeah. Journey actually, journey, journey, uh, wait a minute. Actually, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I can also show you uh, the other posters that I have. So uh, hold oh, on oh. to your seats. Yeah. Hold on to your seats. While I'm well, well, really <laughs> <really laughs> yeah. 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 That's exactly. Now uh, hang on. Yeah, the, the posters that we have right now. So, like, this is pretty off. Can you see that? The one that's right here next to the. That's one of our posters. Now, actually, I can just hang on. If you are. Yeah, just hold on. This is just. <laughs> no, not that. Yeah, I'll get the t shirts. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hang on a second. Yeah. Let me just get those right here. Hello, yeah, this is the Unrest t shirt, I think. Uh, yeah, let me, yeah, let me open this up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Check this out, yeah, this is the, the Unrest t shirt. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's what we have. So, uh, you can either get these now or like if you if you happen to live in the UK or are attending rest uh, it's an expo that's happening for PC games so yeah yeah this is the I was actually thinking yeah because now because I spent all of my dough on this t-shirt so I won't get the, the snazzy outfits I promised you yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the other side is pretty like it's blank, just a little plug that's written here www.pyrodactyl.com. That's our website. But yeah, otherwise it's blank. So I don't know. You can I don't know what what people what kids are doing with their t-shirts these days. Like draw on it or something, spray paint. <laughs> I don't know, I like it, like, but obviously I'm pretty biased, so, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I can also show you the posters, hang on, yeah, let me just fold this t-shirt, because every t-shirt counts, you know, that, like, stuff like this kind of makes me happy, and also makes me kind of sad, because, like, it makes me happy because it's finally some physical merchandise of my game. It makes me sad because I look at other developers who are who are literally swimming in a sea of their own merchandise and money, and I'm like, man, those guys. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. Let me get the other stuff. Hello, uh, yeah, this is this is one poster that we have. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just one yeah. And this poster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And these are the stickers that are like you know pretty yeah. That this is actually the first game I made. So it's kind of like special for me at least. And yeah, this is the our current logo. And this is our company logo, Pyrodactyl. Yeah. It's a pretty good company, if I only say so myself. <laughs> Let me get the other stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the badges are actually kind of uh, buried. So I have, but I have this bag with me, which has the badges on it. So this is the first badge. That's focus on the camera. Yeah. So it's just like you know, uh, a character from the game you might have seen her, and the the farm's background. That's, and then this is the second one. That's. This is obviously Pyrodactyl, just a company there. Yeah. And the third one is right here. It's, hang on, it's this. It's the Naga guy. My god, this positioning stuff on the camera is there. Yeah. And he, in the background, is the city, like that one, the other one. So, yes. Yeah. And, yeah. That should be pretty, like, I haven't shown you the second poster, right? Yeah, hang on. Hello. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this one. Yeah, uh, I showed you uh, a couple of these, like the actual images in the Kickstarter campaign itself. The third one we are uh, keeping secret for now, but yeah, it should be uh, revealed soonish. But yeah, that's what we have right now. So in case, like uh, I don't know, you want to give us uh, support us and get some food swag in return. Yeah, uh, can anyone actually link? to our website where it's there 
like you know where people can buy this stuff yeah it's just like our website uh, then uh, hang on yeah, yeah okay I, I don't want to do that uh, oh. because then that would be kind of the stream and thing So yeah, that was our stuff. Mm -hmm. And anyway, yeah, that's the link. Are you selling merchandise? Use this opportunity to link it in the stream as well. We'll just have a merchandise show off trade. Yeah. Uh, Terrapox says, I'm, I'm taking it the release is planned in several months. Also, will the game have any kind of beta or QA testing? We will definitely have more QA testers than Fallout New Vegas. That that's for sure. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> yeah. I will say, if you're looking forward to this game, don't QA test it. Yeah. Wait until it's finished, then play it. Yeah. Uh. Uh. It's we are planning to release this in May. Like that's the plan right now. But if it uh, if it so happens that you know if we can like delay a couple of weeks and get some extra stuff fixed then then we'll let you backers know I mean yeah but May is the current planned release date sometime in May so and right now we are going pretty much as scheduled so so unless something pops up in the future this should be the time where Yeah, the main reason actually most of this stuff like is like the merch stuff is sort of uh, like expensive to ship is because like I'm in India, so yeah, shipping my God, like shipping stuff to America might as well as just be like So okay, uh, let's take a final round of. Uh, so just yeah, let's just take a final round of uh, questions before we call it. So anybody uh, like wants to ask us something? Now's the time. Okay then. Uh, okay then. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'd say we're pretty much done today then. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're pretty much done. Uh, yeah. Thanks to everyone for uh, uh, attending and watching us. Uh, did you ever show combat in one of the streams? No. Yeah. And there's there's a reason for that. Yeah. Because like most of the combat is pretty spoilery. So, and also because we haven't yet finalized the entire thing so yeah so okay. we'll show you the combat when it's ready yes yeah yeah there's pretty much there's no non-spoiler combats in this game you never get into a fight where it's just like oh you yeah, know whatever you're just fighting some random dudes yeah. just for no reason yeah we were contemplating combat with a